Hello, one all Yuck Stone, Chapter 217, Science Underdogs. And I gotta say, when I first read this chapter, I was a bit disappointed. I mean, it seemed like it didn't really take all much effort at all on Chrome's part to convince the rest of them. They should go the way of the two-way rocket instead of the one-way rocket. Though this was mostly because I was reading an untranslated version of the chapter and didn't actually understand what anyone was saying. <laughs> yeah, that was a problem. That was definitely a problem. But when I actually read the fully translated chapter, oh my god, above, it's perfect. It is so absolutely overwhelmingly perfect. They're combining the efforts of literally everyone on Earth to send up the rocket in five stages, in five parts, and combining it together to form a mega rocket. <laughs> and that really is what this series has been about since the very beginning, forming a mega rocket. And just the concept, the belief that science can't be accomplished by any one person alone. It requires, you know, everyone working together, combining their efforts to form progress, to form change, to make new things happen. I mean, one of the most famous scientists of all times, Isaac Newton, said, if I've seen further than others, it is from standing on the backs of giants. And that's what the series has been about, you know, standing on the backs of their past accomplishments, continuing to make progress again and again, and just combining the efforts and work of everyone. I mean, think back to, you know, chapter two, we saw Senku living in the Stone Age, and he was surviving, but he was by no means thriving. He wasn't able to really make any progress in his science because he was so focused on, you know, just keeping himself alive. It was only when Taiju showed up they was actually able to start taking some steps forward. And what's more, Taiju was the one who suggested that Senku use the grapes to make alcohol. It was only because of Taiju that Senku was able to make the first revival fluid to actually make it work. <laughs> so yeah, this entire series, you know, the point's never been that one person can change the world with science. It's that one person can change the world with science if he works with others, if he combines what he knows, what others knows. It combines, you know, his knowledge of their efforts and their brawn and just all together they form, you know, a mega rocket. Oh, I love it. I absolutely freaking love it. And it almost has me wondering if maybe the point of this entire series, if maybe the point of the Y Man is actually turn the whole world, you know, against him to combine the efforts of literally everyone to form a mega rocket. And that's why the Y Man petrified the Earth to basically unify all of humanity together under one banner, under the banner of the Kingdom of Science. I mean, I could see that. It could definitely be, you know, more of like a code Yas ending this series. And I think that could work. I really think that could work. Though something else I need to point out is the end of this chapter, when Senko announces they're going to build the internet, both Kasuki and Sai end up disrobing. Yeah, the effect is spreading, meaning by the final chapter, we can have a scene where every single character just robes all at once. <laughs> so the series might end more like uh, Kill a Kill, which I would not hate. I would certainly, certainly not hate that, seriously. Uh, if you haven't seen Kill a Kill, go freaking watch Kill a Kill. And if you have seen Kill a Kill, go watch Kill a Kill. It is worth watching a second time. <gasps> oh, that's great anime. That's a freaking amazing anime. But anyway, speaking of the internets, yeah... That go badly. That go really, really badly. I mean, I've seen a lot of online making jokes like, oh, Sai's gonna make porn. Sai's gonna make porn. That's what the internet's for. And while I could actually see something like that happening, though I really, really don't want to, I think the much bigger concern is the internet is terrible. It is just, you know, overwhelmingly terrible because there is no absolute rule, no absolute logic on the internet. Whatever anyone says can be, you know, interpreted as being true. And it's really hard to say, okay, this person actually knows what they're talking about, or this person is talking out their butts. And that could lead to so, so much damage to the kingdom of science, especially if some people try to, you know, turn against Senka with insane conspiracy theories and lies. And what's more dangerous, half truth, because there are a whole lot of facts about Senku that can be twisted, turn the world against him. And that could be a rather interesting arc. I mean, let's, you know, not forget way, way back when, you know, the Stone Wars, Senku lied to everyone and said, oh, America's up and running again. Uh, you should come over here. You shouldn't fight us anymore. You should just, you know, lay your weapons down. So how do they know Senku's not doing that again? I mean, this whole big thing to go after the Y Man on the moon, that's just ridiculous. I mean, how could anyone live on the moon for thousands and thousands of years like that? It doesn't make any sense. And what's more, let's not forget Senku was the one who petrified the entire world the second time. How do we know he wasn't the one who did it the first time? How do we know Senku wasn't the one who petrified the entire planet. I mean, where exactly to get this Medusa from? Where exactly to get the power to petrify people from? Oh, it fell from space? Yeah, right. That makes absolutely no sense at all. I think there's just a lot of ways, you know, the truth could be twisted and basically turn people against Senku, turn people against the kingdom of science and work to, you know, actively sabotage him. And that could be interesting. It could definitely, definitely be interesting. I mean, yes, we're having, you know, Sai actually make this internet on what is essentially punch cards. So it's probably going to be a bit more monitored than our current internet is. But still, 
That is worrisome, very, very worrisome. And I really see that being, you know, a plot twist the series takes as the next big arc is basically the battle against misinformation. <laughs> oh, that could be interesting. That could definitely, definitely be interesting. Anyway, though, back to this chapter, Chrome and Suka are certainly not happy because they've essentially run out of time. Now they've actually figured out where the Y-Man is located on the moon. They're going to start building the 1A rocket immediately, like seriously, the next very day. So they need to figure out the solution right now and there's not enough time. And even if there was, you know, actually testing it would take decades and decades and decades and they just can't do it. They just can't justify to everyone else waiting that long when the Y-Man could attack at any time, especially if the Y-Man somehow managed to sabotage the Medusa, or they think the Y-Man sabotaged the Medusa. I'm still leaning towards Ukyo here, but he didn't really give me any reason to suspect him in this chapter, so I'm not sure. I mean, I said this before, but maybe he sabotaged Medusa for the sake of, you know, essentially delaying the rocket, trying to convince Senku not to use Medusa to petrify himself in space. I mean... That would make some sense, but it seems like Senku did the exact opposite, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, though, at this point, Krum realizes they only got this far by combining the efforts of every single person together, and that's exactly how they'll build the Mega Rocket, by combining the efforts of everyone on Earth, by com literally combining the rocket to form a Mega Rocket! And Sai agrees. Sai believes the math can actually work. That it is physically possible to build a mega rocket in space and have that, you know, launch them from the moon back down to Earth. Yay! And then, much to Senku's confusion, they host a mega science conference and basically say they don't want Senku going on a one-way rocket trip to the moon. And Senku looks a little bit annoyed here. I mean, he realized, yeah, okay, I know you guys would have an issue with this, but there's no real other option. I mean, a two-way rocket would make more sense, but it would just take way too long to design and test. So this is the only way we can actually do this and make sure that, you know, everyone comes out of it okay, even if it means that I'm going to be stuck on the moon for a couple centuries or decades or whatever. And I do just love here that Senku is almost, I can't really say talking down to them, but talking to them as if they don't know what they're really talking about. Talking to them as if they don't understand rocket science, which they do, which he does not know. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. And so Chrome gives out the plan, the five stage rocket, the five rockets that are going to launch up into space and combine together to form the Mega Rocket, which I am just now realizing called a Mega Ship, and I've been calling it a Mega Rocket this entire video, so eh, that's on me. That's on me. But anyway, the response to the Mega Rocket is, um, perplexion. Let's go with perplexion because, yeah, they look, uh, confused. Very, very confused. As if they think this idea, you know, was just thrown together, makes no sense. It was done by people who have no real understanding of rocket science. It would never work. But Zeno and Senku, they are shocked. They realize, wait a minute, that this could actually work. And what's more, clearly they know more about rocket science than they ever should. So how exactly did they do this? Of course, this is Senku, so he absolutely has to take the wind out of their sails and say, oh, that's exactly how the International Space Station was uh, built. <laughs> Which I love. I freaking love it. It kind of reminds me back of when Chrome and Koski worked together to build the water wheel. And Senku's like, yeah, it's a water wheel. We had that back in my day, but, you know, I'm still kind of impressed by this. <laughs> oh, I love it. I freaking love it. And even Senko and Zeno have to admit, you know... This plan is relatively sound and fairly well thought out. It could work, but it would require millions upon millions of parts. And, you know, it would require so much labor to actually get that done. To which point now, good old Ryu has pointed out, you know, we have a whole bunch of labor. We have the entire freaking world combining their efforts to build this rocket. So that could work. That could certainly, certainly work. And so they decided to vote. They decided to vote on the science. And I just absolutely love this scene as Chrome is just, you know, with tears in his eyes as he's pleading, begging for the chance to, you know, pitch his case to everyone to let them vote and to show that by combining their efforts and the strengths, they can build and create. And even Zeno is touched by this. Even Zeno is touched by this. You can see the light in his eyes. They look more human than they have at almost any other point in this series. He almost looks like he's on the verge of tears too. Oh my God, I love this page. I freaking love this page. And you know, the whole voting thing could just be them, you know, grabbing some white and black rocks and each person voting by casting one rock into a basket. But no, this is freaking Psy we're talking about, so obviously he would build a freaking voting algorithm in the span of like 30 seconds. Oh, I love you, Psy. I freaking love you. I just freaking love the line Ryu has here. Senku, just like how you never lie when it comes to science, Psy would never taint his coding with deceit. Oh, I love Psy as a character. I freaking love Psy as a character. And as it turns out, the voting algorithm works, and they decide on the two-way rocket. Huzzah! 
And what I really, really love is that when Sai goes back, when Sai checks it out, he finds that not a single person voted for the one rocket. They all want to go the two-way rocket. They all want to bring Senku back. Even freaking Zeno did not want to, you know, live in a world without Senku. Oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, I think part of this, him, you know, just super excited for the chance to build something that, you know, never existed in the modern age, to literally build something brand new, to essentially have the Stone Age surpass the modern age. But at the same time, I do think, you know, he's touched by Chrome and wants to continue his efforts in science to work with Chrome and Senku to keep making new things, to keep advancing the path of science, even if it means resulting in a world that isn't quite like he wanted. Though I should probably point out that the world that Senku is planning on building isn't all that much different from, you know, the scientific dictatorship that Zeno is planning on building. I mean, yes, obviously, Senku's kingdom is going to have way more freedom, but still, it's a world where everyone values science, where everyone works together and combines their efforts, and no one is really all that greedy. They all recognize, you know, what needs to get done and gets it done. I mean, they really haven't had to deal with any major problems of people, you know, being lazy, not working hard enough, or, you know, just essentially not getting the job done, so... I'm curious about that. I'm very, very curious to see if that changes over time. And like I said before, the next big step is going to be making the freaking internet. And that could definitely get some problems. I would love to see Sanko and the rest of them, you know, having to overcome those problems using science, psychology, and whatever else they can whip up at the drop of a hat. <laughs> oh, that'd be interesting. That'd definitely, definitely interesting. Please leave all down below. How exactly are they going to go about building internet next chapter? I mean, I mean, would that require them, you know, laying cable across the ocean? Because that would require, you know a whole bunch of cable. I guess the other option is, you know, basically launching satellites, but I kind of feel like, you know, a satellite-based internet might really, really attract the attention of the Y-Man, and he might start sabotaging it, or bombing it, or doing something. I mean, it doesn't seem to really have any effect on the Earth right now, but when it comes to space, that's his domain, so he could definitely, you know, cause some damage there. I'm not sure about that. But please, let me know all this down below. Be sure to like, subscribe to the next video, and until then, peace!